carbon removal is in a supply constrained market. What that looks like is that, you know, if you look at the current ability to pull carbon from the sky, it's only on the order of thousands of tons of carbon were removed last year. If you look at the programs, uh, like the ones developed by Stripe, Shopify, and Microsoft, you know, they've struggled to go out and find supply. They've struggled to go out and find people that are actually pulling carbon from the atmosphere. And with new big announcements coming in uh, last week from, from Stripe, and I'm sure this week we'll have some more commitments like this, these you know billions of dollars coming in, and what they demand is carbon removal, and what they want to pay for is carbon removal. So when I say that carbon removal is in a supply-constrained market, what does that mean? So supply literally means pulling molecules of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and storing it. Demand is paying for that. Demand is uh, paying for carbon removal credits and things like that. So supply and demand. The thing is, we've always lived in, uh, in a pretty demand-constrained world. So what a demand-constrained world looks like is, you know, it's really <laughs> that was what the world looked like kind of pre-COVID, right? Demand-constrained world, you go to the store, you get the thing. You want to go get a PlayStation? Great. You want to get an Xbox? Sure. You walk into the store, you walk out with the thing. In a demand-constrained world, the customer is always right. And if you're selling a product, you're kind of, you know, being really nice to your customers. The flip side is, what does the supply-constrained world look like? And what I've seen is, at least in this uh, this this new world, kind of during COVID and, and post-COVID, is, is a lot more supply constraints. I see you know, not being able to buy the stuff that I want to be able to buy. I see inflation and rising prices, uh, you know, needing to, at one point I was trying to buy a VR headset and I had to log on to this website for days and days and days to try and, to try and secure one because the supply was super constrained. We haven't spent our lives living in a supply constrained world, but it's kind of, that's that's what it looks like. It looks like lines outside of a Best Buy trying to get that one Xbox that they have uh, in in supply. And so my message to uh, to founders in carbon removal, people that are working on uh, creating a new supply for carbon removal, people that are joining teams to help grab onto molecules of carbon dioxide, is that you now live in this supply-constrained world. It means that when you're going to a customer, when you're going to an investor, when you're going to somebody that's that's buying what you're selling, you have the advantage. Now, it's not totally cut and dried yet, but I think this 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 shift with the new billion dollar uh purchase vehicle from um from Stripe and other companies uh with more things like that coming up, South Pole is working on one that they announced announced last year. It's going to increasingly be that you're the one that's picking who your customer is. You're the one deciding what terms you want and how you want to uh, interact with with the line of customers that's forming outside the door of your shop. So I'm not sure how long this is going to going to last, but I think it's important for founders to take advantage of it while they can. Carbon rule is a supply-constrained market. Uh, for the next maybe five or so years, long-term, clearly there's there's a you know massive massive uh, need for more demand for carbon removal. So if you think about gigaton scale carbon removal. Sure, there's still a demand problem. If you uh, if you had a, a, a gigaton of carbon that you had removed, or if you had you know, big amounts of carbon that you had removed, the reality is you wouldn't be able to, to sell it. The de- but, but that's kind of a longer term problem. Whereas in the short term, there's billions of dollars that are lined up uh, to, to buy carbon. Uh, and so at this sort of this short window, it is gonna be a supply constrained market. And just kind of keep your eye on, on it longer term because it's, who knows, maybe it will switch back to being a demand uh, a demand market if you know policies change and, and the government just says, you know, hey, we need to pull gigatons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and we've got the money to do that. Yeah, well, maybe it switches back to being a, a, a defined, um, a, a demand controlled market where they get to set the rules. But for now, 
you know, these long RFPs and things like that, in a, in a supply constrained world, you kind of get to be in control of some of that. You get to say, you know what, long RFP, I'm just going to go sell to somebody else. So I encourage founders to, to start thinking about that, thinking about that you really do have a lot of, uh, you, have, you have an advantage right now. And again, not sure how long this will last, but it's extremely clear now that, that carbon rule right now is a, is a, a supply constrained uh, market. Um, and it, yeah, I think that Air Miners has a responsibility to, to help founders understand this and appreciate this, that, you know, we're here to help a hundred, you know, hundreds of companies get going uh, and to get to that stage where they're able to sell carbon to customers, where they're able to uh, go out and say, you know what, we're going to be able to create carbon either now or sometime in the, in the near future, and we're able to, to, uh, to deliver carbon uh, to customers. So our goal is to, how do we, how do we shrink that, that time for, uh, for a new supply? How do we create a, a supply pipeline uh, of carbon removal from, from new companies, from new ideas, from people that, you know, they have a, they have a thing that nobody's ever heard of before and they think that it could pull carbon from the, from the sky. We want to help you get to that stage where you're then able to, uh, start selling carbon removal. So that's my message. Uh, you know, I think that it's it's important as a as we have a responsibility to help teams shorten that path and to understand that right now uh, we're in a supply constrained market. Uh, we're starting a new batch of of Launchpad in uh, two ish weeks and <laughs> interviewed fifty teams. Jason and Adina uh, met with all these teams, and it's just really incredible stuff that's that's coming in the pipeline. And, and looking forward to working. Uh, hands-on with all those teams and, and encouraging them to, uh, to, to see this, this uh, supply opportunity uh, as one for their, for their company. So uh, Carbon Rule is currently a supply-constrained market. Um, take advantage of it while you can. Uh, enjoy having customers lining up outside your door. It may not always be the case, um, but for now, make use of it on the path to gigaton-scale carbon removal.